Well, a good afternoon, everybody. I think we're ready to kick off. So first, I'd like to welcome you all to today's webinar uh, entitled Digital Transformation in Action, uh, Customer Focused Strategies for Digital Success. So for those who, who know me or don't know me, um, I'm David Jeffries and I'm the CEO and co-founder of ActionPoint. We've been delivering digital transformation projects to our clients for many years now, although we haven't always referred to it as digital transformation. And I'm sure many people think the phrase itself is a bit sensational. You know, I think a lot of people look at digital transformation as a, as a big bang and it can be a scary kind of concept to get your head around. And what does it mean? And it means different things to different people. But the truth is that we are all already on a digital transformation journey. We all use calendars, we all use uh, email. We're all using technology to some uh, point in our businesses. We're working remotely and since COVID we've been asking more of technology and in turn in action point we've been asked for more technology leadership from our customers to help them to to better leverage technology in their business so to simplify things we we went about breaking down digital transformation into six key pillars against which we benchmark our clients so then we can identify strengths and weaknesses identify where they're looking to to get to and, and the areas of their business are looking to leverage technology and we could then bridge the gap and come up with a plan to work with them. So one of those key pillars is customer experience, both the internal and the external customer. We all have a customer in our jobs. It could just be our boss. How do we provide them with more information as to how we're performing? Um, we may provide a, a service to another department within the business. Or of course, if we're a service based organization, we would have to provide our, our services to our customers. But by putting the customer at the heart of what we do, we can then prioritize those digital investments that help our businesses to grow and we can wrap our processes around our customers making them happier and in turn leading to to more growth so in this webinar we reflect on a data from our q1 digital transformation index report how this is influencing planning decisions across the whole sector we then narrow our focus to customer experience looking first at the frameworks and tools for customer experience leadership before we'll delve into a real life success story where DigiWeb used customer experience and a benchmarking tool, Trustpilot, to drive improved processes and growth using technology. So today, as you can see from the slide, we have Stephen Rogisco, who's the Managing Director of Resonation. Stephen will talk to us about experience management. We have Olivia Purton, who's the Care and Collections Manager in DigiWeb, and she will talk about how they leverage Trustpilot for competitive advantage. And we have Abhishek Tomar, and we're going to, he's our lead digital transformation consultant in Action Point. And Abhishek will first talk to us about some trends in digitalization. And then later on, we'll also hear from Abhishek around uh, taking the next step and where to go to from here. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over for a, uh, for, to Abhishek. Now, so Abhishek, if you want to. Uh, yeah, work uh, you. thanks, Jeff. Uh, can you hear me now? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Abhishek, and I'm the lead digital transformation consultant at Action Point. So my job really is about facilitating the senior management of organizations in different sectors of different sizes. In so my job is really to facilitate them in discovering where they are on their digital maturity journey and how can they go on on their digital transformation journey where the digital strategy can be aligned with their overall business strategy. So we work with them coming up with recommendations on how they can move forward on their digital journey. So what we did to that end was that we last year we launched our digital maturity self assessment, which is an online survey where you self reflect on your own digital maturity. It's a five to seven minute survey with maybe around 35 to 40 questions. So we got about 248 responses until the end of December of last year. We actually published this report in February of this year. We had responses from various leadership positions like director, C-level, VPs and all. And we had a good mix of large, mid-size and small companies and 18 industries were being covered there. So I won't go into details there, but you can see there are a number of manufacturing, financial service and technology companies. And the company size, you know, about a quarter of them are between 11 and 50, but about half of them are uh, between 50 and 1000. So that gave us a very good uh, spread of companies that we are working with. 
Um, so what we came up with based on those 248 responses is like Dave spoke about earlier that we look at the digital maturity from six pillars, which are digital strategy, data intelligence, capability, processes, customer experience, and risk and compliance. So what came out was, I mean, and maybe we were a bit strict on the marking. So we divide the marks that they achieve from between zero to 100, and we divide into five blocks of 20 marks each. So literally, I mean, almost no organizations were pre-digital, which is probably understandable that if the organization is existing in this age, it cannot be pre-digital. But also there were literally almost no organizations in digitally strategic which means that uh, probably the alignment of digital strategy with the business strategy still needs some work. But the thing to see here is that most of the organizations are reactive, which isn't that bad as it sounds because they have been reacting to challenges as they are facing them. They have somewhat clear IT priorities and they are reacting to needs and so on. And a number of organizations, I mean, a majority of organizations are digitally purposeful, which is good because they have a purpose. It's just about execution from there on. So when we start looking at an organization, that's the first step to see where you are in your journey before you start looking at what we should do in order to move forward in that journey. So some organizations may need to work more on capability. Others might need to work more on customer experience. Now for this uh, webinar here, we are focusing on customer experience and which is, I believe, the, one of the most important pillars there because if you put customers at the center of everything, that's where you can have the business agility and sustainability and so on. So just moving on from there, uh, coming to the insights and what we found from that data. So a big challenge that we have in Ireland, so most of these responses are from Ireland, is on digital capability that you can see here that the capability of people who are working is an issue and it's despite the fact that those same people are using applications, various phone applications and other things in their social life. So it's about organizations catching up to where people are, their employees are in their social life, in the use of technology and providing them that technology. But also if you see here, the risk and compliance score is really high, which means that people are aware of how important it is to be specially GDPR compliant or have nice security in place because the repercussions can be really, really um, hard on the organizations. But also on the usage of tools that we see here, the customer experience tools overall score is pretty low and same is true for data intelligence tools. And we'll talk about what tools they are uh, in a bit. Yeah. So as I said, risk and compliance is important people understand it and maybe it's a necessary evil in the business it's not really a gain maker for the organizations it's a pain that can be caused if they don't do it so it's a pain reliever that people are looking at risk and trying to mitigate it but the middle one here is interesting because you can see that just about half of the organizations are using collaboration and communication platforms like teams or slack or others despite working remotely so, I mean, it's a, it's really interesting to see how people are working, how they are collaborating and going forward when we see that hybrid working might be the way forward. It's really a key area when we talk to the clients here. But also the last one here, only, only about 10% organizations are considered optimized or strategic, which means that most of the organizations, they have a plan in place but they still need to optimize it by improving upskilling maybe their people, increasing the capability, looking at CX from a more empathetic view of their customers rather than, the, rather than in, in inside out view. And probably there are a number of uh, steps that may be uh, taken to get hold of some low hanging fruit for most of the organizations that we work with. Um, so not unsurprisingly, I mean, 80% of organizations are really satisfied with the GDPR compliance, but more than 63% of organizations, they don't have a digital skills plan in place, which again points back to the lack of capability 
so when we say digital skills plan we are we talk about having a skills matrix where we see what digital skills are required within the organization to achieve our business goals what skills do we have and what do we need to do this year or the year next to it in order to move towards having those skills and having multiple skills so we are not dependent on a certain individual uh, to have that skill covered uh, some more points there i'll actually skip this slide and go to the next one which actually gives more uh, details in this so when we ask people what is the reason behind adoption of certain technologies productivity and efficiency gain came up at the top which again shows that we are trying to still trying to optimize we are not looking at technology as a strategic enabler that can actually help us launch new products or enhance the current products or maybe even look at sustainability have the green agenda but there are organizations i mean there are green shoots you can see about one fourth of the people or just about one third of the respondents they are actually looking at their products and services from technology uh, perspective first so they are actually going digital first on that account and on the cx tools as we said earlier social media is widely used but there is also chatbot mobile apps and automatic callback and live chat coming up really big so they are somewhere there but i think 33% and 30% are really good numbers here so when we asked people that do you think technology has improved customer loyalty and stickiness and more than half of them said yeah they strongly agree or agree which is um probably expected but measuring that stickiness and loyalty as an attribute of technology that's i think a key ingredient there which we need to look at but also number of organizations have a lot of data coming in from customers and the point is are we using that data to better understand the customer and provide them more customized solutions or solutions which are suited to their needs and again 59% of organizations believe that they are not doing that even though they have that data so those are the views that we got from the report and in fact we are looking to launch the next edition in the next few months uh, for the data from jan to june of this year and we hope to see some more interesting insights there so on to steven then thank you thanks abhishek how are you thank you so i'll just share my deck now and we can go from there okay great um Okay, so as uh, as I was talking to Peter and David and Abhishek about this call, um, it was really interesting for me to um, just make sure I'm sharing. One second. It was really interesting for me to reposition customer experience into something wider, which I'm going to introduce you to, which is experience management. It is using experience in a much wider uh, context uh, for you. So my name is Stephen Rostitsko. I'm the Managing Director of Resonation. I'm a customer experience consultancy business. I partner with Action Point on customer experience and help them with some of their clients and I work with other clients as well. Uh, but my goal is to really bring customer experience and experience management to be a much more strategic element for businesses as you use technology, as you improve your, your business for growth. Um, so today I want to introduce you to experience management. Um, experience management framework, or XM as I call it, has four core experiences. There's the brand experience, customers at the early start of potentially looking at your brand, wanting to buy, acquire, you know, looking for information on what's out there in the marketplace. There's a whole experience around you as a company, as a brand out there trying to sell your wares in a competitive environment. Uh, there's the product experience, so a lot of companies are product or service based. So it's how customers use your product, uh, the features it has, the user experience, the quality returns, all of the things that are going on around product development and positioning your product in the marketplace. There's the customer experience, so around your customer journeys, around your daily interactions, and how that experience stands out, uh, and the moments of truth you create that are either memorable for good or bad reasons. And of course, there's an employee experience. You can't really have a good ex a customer experience without creating a good employee experience. So now you can see XM is kind of a much broader area for 
four core experiences all together uh, representing your business in the in the marketplace. What are the metrics and measurements that experience management look at? Well, in your brand, it's all about brand awareness. It's your brand uh, tracking. It's the perceptions you have in the marketplace compared to others. It's how you position that brand and what traction you're getting in the, in the market. Um, for your product experience, it's your product quality. It's the user experience. It's, if it's if it's a retail product or a services product, there could be a lot of product ratings. I know Olivia will be talking about this in the next presentation. Uh, product issues, what experiences uh, potentially false or issues you're having with your service or your product. If it's an online business, returns are a big issue and why are those returns coming back to you? And the user experience using the product um, in terms of its functionality, in terms of what does it deliver on the promise of it? Is it delivering on what you what the, what the customer bought? And then the customer experience, it's measuring customer satisfaction. It's measuring how satisfied customers are with their with the products or services they they're, they're using or their interaction or touch point they had face to face or online. It's a customer effort score. And effort score is a really interesting area to measure because it says how easy are you to do business? Um, and asking somebody, was it easy to buy? Was it easy to on board? Was it easy to use your product? Was it easy to get help? Was it easy to call up and renew? That, um, that's a really interesting uh, metric. And Net Promoter Score has been around for a long time. Based on your recent experience which, with this company, would you? how likely are you to recommend them to friends, family or colleagues on a score of a 10? So all these are metrics that can give you quantitative scores. Uh, 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 but the qualitative score is really interesting too to measure. Uh, why did you give that score? So the verbatims that you get back from customers are really valuable. And that's uh, that's a, you can mine that data either using data analytics or um, uh, manually to go through them and find and collect information and turn that information into insights and ultimately actions. And again, in your employee experience, you're looking at the whole area of measuring employee engagement, measuring um, employee satisfaction, does an employee net more score based on your experience of working in this company? Would you recommend it to friends? Uh, again, that's a metric you can have. And again, why do you, why do employees give that? Why what what's their view on how you run your business and how you can collaborate better, how you can innovate better, how you can communicate better? Um, and and these are very interesting metrics. And when you see it like this, it kind of brings it out to a much broader area. Um, the next area is. Let's look at it in terms of XM being in the middle of this uh, slide for a second and on the right, left hand side you've got the four experiences we talked about brand, product, customer and employee. And on the right hand side, let's look at this from your business perspective. So if you're a manufacturing or supply chain company, you have a lot of ERP information, the technology that's there, how you measure uh, your supply chain, your days out, stock control, uh, how that then permeates into your sales, your marketing campaigns, your e-commerce website, e-commerce campaigns, social media, your CRM. Again, a lot of data and information technology there in those platforms. Customer support or customer care. You've got your contact center. What's going on in your contact center uh, queues? What's going on in your, your call rates? Your billing uh, uh, transactions that have been paid on time. Is there issues there? And if you're a help desk, what ticketing information you have? Um, in the people management, well, HRM, you know, you have a lot of information around your employee satisfaction, your employee attrition, your employee uh, retention. Um, uh, you know, in, are your company taking on a lot of new employees? Are you growing? What's your onboarding? Uh, you know, there's a lot of information that you can get from those tools, as well as your communication tools that Ebishek talked about, your collaboration. Uh, software and your communication tools. And then again, in your financial management, you have a huge amount of KPIs there. So we're putting all this together. You can see that there is a mix of um, what we're calling a second, uh, mix of um, X data and O data. So on the left hand side, you've got your experience data, which is X data. And on the right hand side, you've got your O data. And by putting them together on a dashboard, you you get a much bigger picture. Abhishek said that you know a lot of companies, over half companies, are using dashboards, but some aren't using it as a source of information to make the experience better for your employees and your customers and your products and your brand, but also in your operations. And by putting them side by side, 
So if you're getting more product returns, why is that? Well, we've an issue in supply chain. You're getting higher satisfaction in, in customer experience. Why is that? Well, we've less calls. We're dealing with them faster. There's no queues, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, this, these data correlates and it can be tracked and, and dashboard out. So customer experience, as you probably know it, or customer service or customer care is really morphing now into experience management. It's much broader. It allows you to measure and improve a wider range of experiences than before if you look at it through these lenses. Experience management feedback can be used as a source of continuous learning and improvement. And by putting experience management feedback into the hands of the people across your organization, in the warehouse, in your supply chain, your product, product development, in your, in your customer care, in your technical support, uh, you know, in your in your re, in your e-commerce team, you can do something about it, but you have to give this feedback back to the team who know about it and you can use it. It's also a source that you can praise your team by saying job well done. This is what customers are saying about us. And if they say things that you need to do better, well, you can take that constructively and do something about it. But you can't do something about it if you're not sharing that information and technology can help you there to share it. By converting your XM insights into action, you can then create a roadmap of changes for your products and your touch points, your journeys, your systems, technologies and processes. So now you can see that experience management is a much broader tool, strategic tool to enhance your experience. So why does it matter to sum up? It matters because it helps you with your brand uh, uh, awareness and consideration and buyer acquisition rates. It helps you with your repurchasing and renewals, it allows you to upsell products and and, and, custom and um, get more spend from the wallet. It XM fuels recommendations. Key part of any business is driving customer recommendations. They're free. It's easy to grow your business and it grows the customer loyalty. It's a real KPI to watch. Um, product development, you know, a lot more feedback you get from your customers and what they think of your products. You can develop the next line of products much easier and collaborate and involve employees in that. XM allows you to identify your pain points with your um, with your uh, customer journeys and your systems and processes. Um, it allows you to put your X and O data together and create business cases to invest in digital transformation. Get that data on one dashboard that shows the correlations between what's going on in the operations, makes a better customer experience or where the gaps potentially are from achieving a higher customer experience. Um, XM creates a more engaged employees. Engaged employees will deliver better customer experiences. Any company I've ever gone to, I've never seen a disengaged employee deliver great customer experiences. It's just not possible. So by creating more engaged employees, you'll deliver better products and better services and better customer experiences. And then ultimately it's cheaper. It's cheaper to have a more efficient, uh, uh, a higher, a higher productivity, less contacts, more, more first time resolution, but less, less effort or e easier to do business with is basically a way of reducing your costs. If you're inefficient, you're going to have more contacts, things are going to go wrong, you have fault rates, you have you've returns to deal with, and this clutters up your business and is costly. So taking customer experience seriously and, it, and investing in it allows you to uh, step ahead and reduce your operating costs, increase your margin, and use that growth money then to, to acquire more. So if there's any questions at this, we can, we can put it in at the end, but I hope this gives you a flavor of more experience, what experience management is about, and I know that the, what you're going to get next in Olivia will really bring it to life for you. So thanks very much. Stephen, thanks very much. It's great to see how um, this is a very, uh, it's a process to this. It, this isn't just about um, one thing, it brings everything together. So um, so just before I, uh, I hand over to Olivia, I was just going to uh, remind our audience that feel free to pop any questions that you might have or any thoughts that you might have into the chat and we will have a Q&A session at the end. So Olivia, thank you. Over to you. Thank you. I'll just uh, share my screen here with everybody. OK, I think. Hopefully that's yeah, that's come up there, I think. OK, so my name is Olivia Parton. I'm the Care and Collection Manager in DigiWeb in Dundalk. Um, we're a company that have been operating now for 25 years. So we are 
we're, we're around. It doesn't seem to be one second. It's not. Ah, there we go. Yes, we've been around a while. We know what we're doing, we hope. Um, our competitors would be household names, um, in some cases international, but we are selling, we're selling the home phone, selling broadband, satellite, electric broadband, fibre. We would kind of consider ourselves a little bit like the David and the Goliath, you know, in the terms of, you know, our competitors would have very, they would have large customer bases. They would in some cases be able to bundle with different things like TV and mobiles, and they would definitely have a large marketing budget. But uh, we feel we're holding our own there because back in, I think it was 2017, 2018, uh, there was a bit of a price war going on. And we found that while we, we couldn't be the cheapest, we needed to be the best then in something. We needed to be the best in terms of the service and experience. We we had been using the net promoter score that Stephen was referring to. So the net promoter score, score of one to 10, if, if your customers are very happy, it's usually a survey that goes out at the end of every call or at the end of some interactions with, with customers. We were doing really, really well, but it didn't mean as much. Maybe it wasn't something we could use, say, as an advertising tool, because saying we scored seven on net promoter or we scored eight, it didn't necessarily have the same back bang as saying how many stars we scored. So we decided to start using Trustpilot. People were more familiar with using review sites anyway at that stage, the trip advisors and even the price comparison websites. And we felt that as we've been doing so well in the net promoter score, that there was going to be no fear in using Trustpilot. You know, we felt if if we were doing as well in Trustpilot as we had been doing in Net Promoter, there was nothing that we would have to hide as such, and we would you know, be able to use it more successfully. Now, we're not naive enough to think that cost isn't important. You know, it, it's very important, but speed for your internet, stability, after sales care, especially I think at the moment with everybody working from home, you know, it's it's massively important. They like the service matters, the human response matters. You don't want to be waiting to get through to somebody for 20 minutes. You don't want to be passed from pillar to post. You want to get on a call, deal with the issue and move on. OK, and we've been finding that, you know, our, our reviews, our, they they can be used as both a retention tool and as a sales tool. So when we have a customer who's sort of thinking about leaving us, you know, they're sort of saying, well, I've been approached by another company and they seem to be offering what you're offering, and, but they are a few euros cheaper or whatever. We can actually say to them, well, look, why don't you go on to our review site, <clears throat> see what everybody's been saying about us. You, you, you know, you yourself have had a good experience. The, the reason you're moving maybe is, is to do with, say, financial, but or even would you go and look at the other uh, and look at the person, the company you're moving to, look at their reviews, see what you think then, you know, and that can be a, a deciding factor in, you know, I think I'll stay with DigiWeb. I'm, I'm really happy to see that they're they're maintaining their five stars. It doesn't really drop off. So it can be great for the for the people who are thinking of leaving and it can also be a great help to our sales team. You know, if they have somebody who is sort of on the fence, let's say they're, they're deciding between two different companies and you know, I've heard the sales team when we've been in the office saying things like, well, it's not just me saying it. Why don't you go over to Trustpilot and have a look at what our current customers say about us? You know, in 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 relation to everything, not just in how we engage with customers, but in relation to our speed, in relation to our technical support, in relation to the modem. You know, everything gets covered, if you like, in the in the review site. And I suppose how we kicked it off was initially you know, this refers back to, I suppose, using technology because initially we asked at the end of a call, oh, were you happy with how that went today? Would you leave me a review? You know, people, the agents were reluctant even in asking for a little bit, felt a little bit like fishing for compliments. But people naturally, when they got off the call, their, their issue was resolved. They forgot about did you have until, you know, they, they went, you know, the next time they went to pay a bill or whatever. So we started to use automated SMSs. So that was really to our advantage in not only could we send the SMS at the end of, of a you know a particularly successful call, but we could even, you know, um, message or manage the SMSs. So whatever the call was about. So if the call was about a billing issue or a financial side of things, or if the call was about the modem or if the call was about speed, we could taper the, the messages that the customer received, which meant that they got a gentle nudge you know, to talk about that particular part of their experience with DigiWeb. Because while 
we do want, you know, lots of individual. This agent was fantastic. You know, the experience was great. It is nice that people can see it's not just the good quality and the good experience they had in the conversation, but that the speed is there. The speed of answering the call was there. It was resolved in one. So again, you know, using your your automated messages to to nudge the customer in the right direction, we definitely found huge success just to have a variety of um, reviews on the website as well. Now, Nicola is Nicola is the poor unfortunate who deals with all the if you like unhappy reviews, all the one star reviews, which I'm glad there aren't too many of. But we would find that one way of engaging more and, and keeping the the reviews coming in is that we answer every single review, good, bad or indifferent. We comment, we personally respond to every single one. And that has actually been very, very important to us for for making some tweaks and making some changes within within our systems. We you know when we read every single one, you can read between the lines. So, for example, you know, some time ago, a customer put a particularly nice review up about, you know, had a difficult call today or, you know, had a difficult issue, but the person dealt with this super very professionally, put me at ease. Now, when we looked back into it, it was a scenario where the customer just you know, for whatever reason, they weren't going to be able to meet the payment at that particular time. And when we started to look at it, you know, that the, the individual agent had spoken about installment plans, which is something we can do. And then we kind of took it a bit further and, you know, we'd see reviews maybe a week later, similar kind of theme to it that they really appreciated that. You know, they didn't necessarily call it out that you're, you're doing it on installments, but we were able to talk to our billing team and they were able to say, well, look, we could, you know, maybe change the way we, we collect our payments. Maybe we can do some some sort of weekly payments that we can do an automated uh, system for the guys to the customers to work with. So, you know, it was I mean, that was huge, hugely advantageous to us from a customer care point of view. We would have things like, you know, customers might have said, I paid my bill over the weekend, the account wasn't on suspended. So again, we can feed that back to our system people. You know, we changed the way if, if a certain threshold of the account, the bill was paid, the account got automatically suspended, unsuspended. So we used it to our advantages, but then, you know, again, customers start to see these reviews and they say, well, you know, the same thing happened to me, so I'm going to leave that review. We also would find that the negative ones, you know, they are learned. They're they're probably the biggest learning tool we have. Um, and what we do with Nicola now, Nicola's actually me, but uh, we we have to kind of we don't have anyone in the company called Nicola, so we felt she was the best person to use. So the customer would email customercare.digiweb.ie and we would ask them to leave it for the attention of Nicola. So while the review stays on the site, you know, and it keeps. It keeps the site, if you like, keeps the, the page legitimate. Like people say, well, they're not all five stars. There are some some poor reviews there. We then deal with the, the situation away from the Trustpilot website. You know, we call the customer ourselves. We find out what was it that actually, you know, led you to give us the one star. What could we do to change it if we can do anything to change it? You know, it's not always going to be the case, but, you know, there are times and, you know, listening to the customers really responding to what the customer said is is the key there, you know, and we don't we wouldn't say to a customer like Nicola would never say to a customer, oh, will you give me a one star? Can you change that to five now that we fixed your problem? You know, we don't do that because, you know, they took the time to leave the ones that they were annoyed. We have reacted and they may choose and in, in the main they do tend to go back and change it or they might just delete it from the website entirely. But uh, as I say, you know, the, the one stars, they're there for a reason and they can definitely benefit from them. Um, this sort of would refer back to what I was saying earlier about the, the text messages being linked to what the conversation was about with the customer, you know, so we have reviews there saying we have the best in terms of customer service. We've other ones, you know, they, they called out an individual and saying that they were very good with the account holders. The ones about the speed, the Fritz box modem, things like that, because, you, you know, the reviews with nearly 4,000 of them, it is great to have the variety. You know, different aspects of the service we're delivering are, are pleasing the customer, you know. And I think the most important aspect of, of learning, if you like, from Trustpilot is that it is a company-wide approach. Everybody for, in the company is involved, you know, every decision we would 
make is based on how it will affect the customer. So no matter what team you're in, be it sales where you don't sell something the customer doesn't need, to, to services and provisioning team who would know, and again, probably from feedback through Plus Pilot, you know, you need to keep the customer informed. So they introduced different things throughout the, the process of, of, of an order being placed to it actually being delivered to the customer. You know, they would keep the customer updated about that, about the engineer's visit, about when to expect the mode and things like that. It's, it's an ongoing process, I suppose, of updating technology to respond quickly to, to what the customer has sort of said, the customer's um, expectations, you know. Within the team, we praise every individual when they get the response, we, we draw attention to it. And then every week, we would send sort of a company wide email. We might pick, you know, review of the week. It could be based on anything. And we'll always sort of say where we're at, what our star rating is this week, you know, things like that. And I think like Stephen was saying, you know, it that is great from a customer care point of view or an, an employee of DigiWeb's point of view, because you see that what you've done is actually very, very valid and, and that the customers have really appreciated. And in turn, you feel appreciated because someone actually has called you out on a review site. You know, and um, how we compare, I suppose what I like about this slide is we're, we possibly have one of the smaller customer bases uh, in, of these different companies. We're nearly at the 4000 mark, you know, the other companies. It, you would think maybe from looking at this, there may be a fear of actually encouraging people to leave a review. DigiWeb have no fear, you know, we are very, very confident that when we send out the, the text messages, when we ask for it, or we have it at the bottom of our emails, we have it on our social media, you know, we have it everywhere. Please, you know, please feel free to leave a review, please go and look at our reviews. So, you know, that sort of speaks for itself, I think. And one of my favourite comments, um, relevant, I think, to, to, to customer experience, people do forget what you said, and they certainly will forget what you did once the problem is solved but they're never going to forget how you make them feel. And I think that is what happens and what we like to say happens when they engage with, with DigiWeb. So thank you very much. I've seen this present before, Olivia. And, uh, it, it always impresses me. It's uh, <laughs> pretty great to see how you guys are using technology um, and how I suppose how engaged you are with the customer uh, and Trustpilot, it's it's a yardstick you can see there on that slide where you guys are head and shoulders above everybody. So I have a few questions for you, but we'll come back to those at a later. Abhishek is going to give us a quick rundown through our approach to digital uh, transformation and our, our digital um, transformation accelerator program that we have. Um, I think Peter wants a, a minute of time as well. Peter's ahead of marketing and then we'll open up to Q&A. So, OK. Um... Yeah, so we'll quickly look at what we do in our digital transformation offering. Um, so we have a free self-assessment digital maturity tool. So you can go to our website and it's, it just takes five minutes and you can actually self-reflect on where you are on your journey. And we then give you a nine page report um, based on your inputs, which gives you your strengths and your opportunities for improvement as well as a few recommendations on what steps you may take in order to move forward in your your digital transformation journey but then there is a digital transformation accelerator which is more of a discovery and design thinking based methodology where we do a full day workshop with you followed by a number of interviews and then a number of brainstorming sessions where we come up with where we are which we got from the self assessment but where do we want to reach in our overall business strategy and then we see how digital can actually help you achieve that strategy by using it strategically but then there is also it assessment because that's more focused on uh, infrastructure because we believe the digital transformation is a function of three items which is people processes and technology so but unless you have technology and systems in place you can't have nice processes or people who are actually using them so ID assessment is from that regard where uh, you need the infrastructure and risk managed approach and see what needs to be fixed before you actually look at your processes and people. So just to give you, I mean, uh, overview, we use Microsoft design thinking framework, which is called Catalyst framework, which is which focuses on empathy. It's a best practice in digital transformation goes through four stages. I won't go through the stages, but yeah, that's uh, that's what we drive from 
and this is a, a typical engagement that we carry out for about seven weeks where we start with your self-assessment we define the scope we have a full day kickoff followed by number of deep reviews on your strategy capability business value and so on and then coming up with observations and concrete recommendations which can be uh, worked upon based on the level of difficulty of that particular recommendation, but also the level of business value that it brings in. So we come up with a priority matrix of items that you can take up. So we have worked on a number of clients over the past nine months. We have worked with people from different industries, likes of Revive Active to Chill Insurance to Netwatch and FMI, all in different industries, all of different sizes, and got very good engagement with them. They are actually on that journey. They are doing all the follow-on projects from what we recommended. A number of them actually availed of uh, enterprise island support as well. So there was a digital uh, transformation enterprise island voucher, which was called digitalization voucher. But now they have other, other schemes like digital discovery, which is a consultancy grant. You have strategic consultancy grant, like which supports up to 35K, but you also have digital process innovation grant, which can support up to even 150K. So there are a number of things that you can use there. And we are uh, authorized. Uh, authorized partner vendor of Enterprise Island to help you achieve all those uh, a number of projects on those items. Yeah, so that's it on what we do, and it's open for questions. And thank you. Thank you, Abjack. <coughs> Whirlwind tour there. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> I know we're stuck for time. We want people to get out for their sandwiches as well at lunchtime. Yeah, yeah. So um, just before we do open up to questions, though, so, um, Peter, you said you wanted to jump in for a moment. Yeah, thanks, Dave, um, and thanks, Abhishek. Yeah, it was just a quick one. So for uh, all of the attendees of today's webinar, we're running um, a special promotion. Um, so you can meet with Abhishek and uh, the Digital Transformation team um, to arrange a free one-to-one -one Digital Transformation consultation. Um, so basically, the consultation will take place over Teams or in person, um, whichever you prefer. And Abhishek will be able to, I guess, explore some of the content he went through there. I know he didn't have a lot of time, but there's a lot of uh, a good process and stuff there. So I've just put up a, um, a little poll there on screen. So if you if you want to arrange a little transformation consultation, click yes. If you don't, click no. I'll leave it up there for a couple of seconds and um, we'll, we'll, we'll follow up after the webinar for anyone uh, that would like to do it. So thank you very much for your time and back to you, Dave. Super. Well, thanks very much. So, um, we'll first open out to the floor and see uh, what questions come in. Does anyone have any questions um, out there? Uh, I'm not seeing any coming into the chat, but uh, I know I have a question for Olivia maybe to get things going. Um, okay. It's not really a very hard one, I hope, but when you look at what you guys are doing and compare it to what your competitors are doing, um, I suppose, have you really found that? You know, by putting the customer first and not on Trustpilot, you would, I suppose, see better engagement and more growth than maybe the uh, your competitors in, say, Vodafone or uh, Air and so forth. Well, I would say yes. I mean, I I don't know their growth, if you like, you know, but um, I feel it's it's particularly, I think, in the retaining customers, you know, which it's customers will say, I was thinking of going, you know, I've seen this offer. But you guys seem to just care for your, you, you know, you value my business. You care for me. I, I've never had issues. I can contact you when I need to contact you. So that has definitely been to our advantage. Um, we use it. We definitely use it to gain customers when they're when they're on, like I was saying, when they're on the fence, when they're just not sure whether they should make this, the jump to us. We would definitely find that it has been, you know, huge value to us. It's just a, it's another tool. If in the in the salesperson's armory, you know, they can say, just check it out there. You know, it's not just us saying it, you know. Very good. And from a systems perspective, a technology perspective, yeah. you, know, um, you know, what changes, I suppose, would you have made to your processes uh, and your systems from a okay. from perspective to, to, I suppose, keep on top of that score and to streamline that customer experience? A lot of the changes would probably have been around feedback we got around, say, the, the financials, so the customer's monthly bill. 
you know, if they were struggling with the monthly aspect of it, particularly in the last couple of years, people have really been struggling. So we were able to, you know, through the, the different feedback, we could see that customers were saying they really like the fact that they don't have to pay up front. They don't always have to do the direct debits. They could do the weekly payment option. So we were able to change that. Our billing system were able to work with us on changing it. We're not a 24 seven call centre, never have been. We did try it for a while, but it, it, you know, we didn't have the call volumes, but we still had customers who would be making their payments in the middle of the night. You know, they would be making their payments on a Saturday. Their accounts weren't getting on suspended. So again, we were able to feed this to our SysDev team and say, is there a way of doing it where if there's a threshold of the balance that's overdue paid, we can lift the suspension. So that was that was huge for us actually, because we weren't coming in a Monday morning to customers saying, but I paid you on Saturday, I, I'm still suspended, you know. Um, those kind of areas, massive, you know, from the customer's satisfaction point of view, and even, I suppose, getting the revenue in, you know, people knew they could pay us at any given time and they would get their, their accounts on suspended and their backup running again. So they were, the, they were probably the two main ones, but the other ones are around the things like keeping the customer informed. The feedback was there that they paced, paced the sale and they might not hear anything till the engineer almost was at their door. But we started introducing like just keeping in touch with the customer at every stage. Last couple of years, we obviously were keeping in touch with them from the COVID checks point of view. But then it was like, you're going to be getting your modem. Will you be there to sign for it? Because, you know, it can, it's an expensive piece of equipment. It wasn't just going to be left. So customers were kept informed at every step of the journey. And if they needed to contact us, then they could on the back of it. You know, so all of these were automated into the actual process of getting a customer on board and then keeping them, you know. Oh, very good, very interesting. Um, and um, I see another question for you, Olivia. You get, you get, you're getting all the uh, attention. Uh, yes. So one of the questions here is, uh, Olivia, thanks for your updates. Really helpful. Like all online solutions, Trustpilot offer various plans from free to significant monthly fee. Yes. Are you able to share which plan you use, please, and whether it gives you all the insights you want? I'm not sure if the financial people want me to share. We we actually did it for free in the beginning. And then we found that, and, and what happens is then you can reach out to Trustpilot and you'll get sort of an account contact who I we have found them to be very helpful. They don't hound you for business. You know, it's not always like, give us more money for this. But we have found we can link it into our emails. We can link it into our socials by paying it. It's not a huge fee in the terms of it. You know, you're probably talking about a couple of hundred a month for a very good platform of uh, a, a sort of additions, you know. So as I say, reach out to, to Trustpilot. I don't work for them, but do get in touch with them. We found them to be really helpful. You probably meet with them then. We, we meet with them once a year and, you know, they say how we're using it. They can see obviously how we use it and uh, we take it from there, you know. Super, thank you. Um, another one from Oz here. Uh, Abhishek, what's the biggest interest area you're seeing from clients regarding digital transformation? Yeah, so actually it's pretty interesting because we thought customer experience and that's the uh, that's the topic of our discussion here. We thought customer experience is the most important item, which it is because uh, the bar has been changing for customers from various industries. Now, even if you're in manufacturing, the customers expect that you have self-service portals you have more visibility of where your product is at more visibility of data i mean people want to know more basically but on the other hand we are also looking at an increased requirement for employee experience so i mean there is a lot of churn in the in various industries right now people if they don't get for example an opportunity to work from home they'll just move to the next organization which was not true a couple of years ago that expectation is changing completely. So now companies are actually starting to invest in their employees because one, they need to attract them and then they also need to retain them. And for that to happen, they actually need to provide that seamless experience of employees. They can be sitting in their homes. They can be coming to the office using various technologies, various devices to use it on their phones, on their laptops and so on. And, you know, communicating and collaborating seamlessly across the board so that's huge and people may have installed for example teams but they have no idea i mean I'm not generalizing but most of them they have no idea of how to use it to the best way that they can so probably they are making calls right now but they don't know that they can collaborate really well within teams they can collaborate they can structure everything there they can look at their their tasks they can sync it to their calendars and all those things so there's a huge uh, 
uh, requirement of that and uh, giving employees the best experience that they can. So I think what I'm hearing from you is training is also part of that and the need to actually not just use the, 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 the tip of the iceberg in some of these tools, but with a bit of training in the tools that are already there, you can you can drive improved customer experience and employee experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Stephen, um, um, just going to the time here is uh, so you know, I, I guess the underlying message that I suppose I took away from your presentation was, well, if you can measure, you can manage. You know, and if you're not measuring, well, how do you know what changes to make? So would you be able to tell us any maybe uh, stories of where you've seen people moving from from that kind of mindset, measuring, managing, and then actually, you know, how, how did they then <clears throat> go about a, a, adopting or adapting their, their processes or, or tools to to drive that improved customer experience or just the whole experience area? Sure, and it's very similar to what Olivia said. It starts with putting yourself out there asking. And you can ask any customer, it's free, you get their feedback. And good or good or bad, it starts you on this journey. So Livy's highlighted that very well. Then you take the data and you start to create, you know, uh, trends or, 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 or things start to have a pattern about it. It could be seasonality, it could be, it could be commonality, it could be teams that, you know, Livy talked about, well, people talk about they're paying their bill or they want installments. So you start to categorize your feedback into categories. You then take that and you create an insight. So now you've got, you've, you've discovered what's really important, what, what customers like. So that's really important to check too, because you can do more of that. And that's that's what everyone wants. What, what's something, if they do a small bit differently, small bit differently, people will, will, see, will notice it. Mentioned about, you know, I pay on Saturday, but I don't I want my service restored. That's just a small tweak, but hugely significant. That's a moment of truth. So, and then there's the major things, right? That that, that you, you might feel are really hard or tr tough to, to, to change. And that might take time or investment. So, but categorize it into what you do well, what you just need to do a little bit differently, and what are the significant things that you should be focused on. That allows you to, to really hone in then monthly and create a bit of a governance around your feedback. So that qualitative question, why did you give that score, is, is, is so important. I give a score out of five, five out of five, but why did you give that score? I give a four, one out of five, why did you give that score? Uh, I like working here, why do you like working here? I don't like working here, why don't you like working here? And then with that data, you create insights and that creates actions and you can prioritize that. So that's really it. So it's it's free information, David. That's that's the key part of this. I've shown you you can you can target in on products or customers or employees. Yeah, and you can do a lot more. But if you're nowhere on this, that's the place to start. Super. Well, thanks very much, Stephen. Well, I'm conscious of time, and I'm sure people do want to go and uh, get their cup of tea at lunchtime here. So before I do, though, I, just, I suppose I'd like to say if any of uh, of the attendees want to reach out to Action Point or would like even to talk to Stephen and Resonation or even uh, Olivia in Digiweb, please uh, feel free to pop a mail back to us um, and we'll, uh, we'll certainly do an introduction. More than happy to see people, you know, improve their customer experience. Um, and I think uh, I think uh, Digiweb might even have gained one customer this morning uh, because uh, <laughs> everybody here, uh, Stephen had a broadband issues this morning. So uh, yes, we're, we're having pressure. I mean, we're honest. Uh, <laughs> I was with one of those very big competitors yeah. you were talking about, yeah. and uh, they had an outage this morning, so I had to hurtle my way to uh, the office at Action Point to save me. So there you go, <laughs> real life example, Olivia. There we go. You used to be with one of the competitors. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, well, listen, thank you very much to our audience, our attendees, uh, and to our participants here. So, thank you, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you again in the next webinar. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. bye. bye.